welcome back to my channel today we are going to be making these very beautiful shorts i think these are my favorites of all time since i started crocheting they have this very beautiful design on the side like on the hip section and they have these really beautiful tassels i'll be having a separate video for how to make beaded tassels because people have been requesting for that tutorial especially the people who have been working the mandala top so uh it has this design on both sides as you can see and then it has a pretty edging at the base this is one of my favorite edgings and you have you have seen this edging um on my tops on several projects of mine i love to wind up my projects like this then it has a waistband that has a drawstring and yeah let's get into the video and learn how to make these shorts so the materials that you'll need for this project are yarn and for the yarn i'm going to be using nako satin and i used a total of about 460 to 500 meters in total because i used two balls plus some extra yarn um, one ball is 230 meters so i used two plus some extra so if you wish to make this project just have about 500 meters of yarn then for the hook i'll be using a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook but i very well understand that most of you guys don't have uh, the 3.75 so if you crochet loosely then you're going to use a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook and if you crochet tightly then you will use a 4 millimeter crochet hook but if you have the 3.75 that would be perfect the other thing that you'll need is a measuring tip and a darning needle and a pair of scissors and let's begin you're going to first take your hip measurement so for me i'll be considering a measurement of 40 inches which is a size medium so just take your hip measurement and you're going to make a chain that stretches to 40 inches so to do that you're going to start off with a slip knot this is how i do it i just cross over this yarn like this so that I have like a ribbon then I put my hook through yarn over pull through and don't let go of this hand and yarn over pull through and then pull the tail so that's my slip knot and then tighten it you can see it's adjustable so you're going to make a chain that is long enough to stretch to your hip measurements keep in mind we want this chain stretch to the fullest because we don't want our shorts to be loose we want them tight fitting and let me go ahead and do mine for this particular shirt i did a total of um 160 chains so let me go ahead and do that and i'll show you the measurements when i'm done so i'm back with my 160 chains and this chain measures um about 30 inches when it's not stretched you can see that when not stretched it's 30 inches but when fully stretched it can go to 40 inches so make sure you have something like that now you're going to make sure that this number of chains is an even number. So I have 160 chains. Now I'm going to make sure that my chain is not twisted. Make sure your chain is not twisted. Make sure the braid is facing you all the way through. And you're going to get this loop. And you're going to go into the very first chain that you made with a slip stitch so insert your hook yarn over pull through all so we've finished um, making our foundation chain and this is what it looks like 
go back to your measuring tape and make sure when you stretch it to the fullest, you're getting half your hip measurement. So since I'm considering um, 40 inches, I should have 20 inches when I fully stretch this piece. You can see that? It's, 40, it's 20 inches. It may be a bit less, but I want it tight fitting. It's about 19.8. So once you achieve that, you're going to chain three and you're going to go into each and every chain with one double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that's a double crochet. So you're going to continue to double crochet into each and every chain all the way around. I'm going to continue to do this and I'll meet you guys back when I'm somewhere around here. Go all the way around your chain until you get back to this point. Okay, so I've made it all the way around and make sure your work is not twisted. So we're going to go on top of the chain three at the beginning of our round into that top chain and make a slip stitch. So that marks the end of round one. And now you're going to get your notebook and you're going to make some calculations. So I told you the first um, number of chains should be an even number. So I had a total of 160. We are going to take off 34 stitches. So I'll remain with 126 stitches. So whatever number you have, take off 34 stitches. This one is a constant. So I'll remain with 126. Divide this by two, and I'll be having a total of 63. So whatever number you have, minus 34, and then divide that result by two, and you'll have a total of 63. So if you divide 63 by two, you're going to be left with 31 and one extra chain one extra stitch so this one extra stitch will go to the back side of our shirt whatever you get from here will be an odd number you just divide it by two and the remainder that extra stitch will always go to the back side so i consider this side with a tail my back side so that means it's 31 plus one stitch which makes it 32 for the back side so I'm going to show you what that means so you're going to make your chain as usual you're going to chain three and that counts as our very first stitch so since this is the back side you're going to make a total of 32 stitches all together so this is one two three continue to do this until you have a total of 32 stitches so right now i have my 32 stitches all together including the chain three at the beginning of our row and you're going to chain three Then you're going to skip three chains. So one, two, three, and into the fourth, you're going to go in there with a single crochet, chain eight, skip four chain, four stitches, one, two, three, four, and into the fifth, you're going to place a single crochet, chain eight, skip four stitches, and into the fifth place a single crochet then you're going to chain three 
skip three stitches one two three and into the fourth you're going to place your double crochet and this counts as our very first double crochet on this side so since I told you this tail represents my back side of the work that means this side is also the back side this is the first half of the back side and the second half is this side so that means here we are working at the front part of our shirt so this is the very first one and after dividing i got 31 and the extra chain the extra stitch went to the back side so the front side will get just 31 stitches so one two you're going to double crochet until you have a total of 31 stitches feel free to fill in the appropriate number of stitches for your shirt All right, so right now I have my 31 chains at the front and remember this design is on the side of our shirt like where your hips are so that means the front side doesn't get any of these designs so you're going to repeat the same exact thing you're going to do 31 more stitches because this is all the front side and then towards the side here we shall do the same exact thing as this so go ahead and do 31 more stitches so you'll have a total of 62 stitches at the front so i have a total of 62 stitches at the front this is because when we divided our 63 by 2 we got a total of 31 but the extra stitch went to the back so 31 times 2 is 62 I hope I'm clear on that so after this after your 62 stitches at the front you're going to chain 3 skip 3 and into the fourth make a single crochet chain eight skip four one two three four and then in the fifth make a single crochet uh, chain eight skip four one two three four and into the fifth you're going to place your single crochet chain three skip three one two three and into the fourth you're going to place your double crochet so this is our very first double crochet on the second half of the back side so um So you're going to slip stitch on top of your chain three. So that marks the end of row two. And now from this row onwards, you're going to chain three and turn your work. Make sure you always turn. We want this seam line to be in one line, one straight line at the back of our shirt. So you chain three and turn your work and work in the opposite direction of the previous row. So you're going to chain three and now we don't have to overthink it. You just prepare for a double crochet and go into the next stitch. 
and double crochet until you get to the last double crochet before the design. So you double crochet until you get to the design. So we have one more stitch. You're going to go into it with your double crochet. So you can see we've reached the design part. You're going to chain eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you're going to skip over this and go into the chain eight space and place your single crochet into that chain eight space. We are not going into the stitch, we are going into the space. And then you're going to chain eight, then single crochet into the next chain eight space. And then you're going to chain eight, and then double crochet in the very first. Double crochet here. And then you're going to continue to double crochet all the way across until you get to the next, the other side of the design. So I have made it all the way across to the second design. You can see I've placed my last double crochet right before the design. And now you're going to do the same thing as we did here. So you're going to chain eight, skip all this and go into the chain eight space and place your single crochet, chain eight, go into the next chain eight space and place your single crochet chain eight and then double crochet into the very first double crochet after the design place your double crochet there and you're going to continue working double crochet until the end of your round and i'll meet you guys back at this point here so we're coming to the end of our round and we have two more stitches I'll go into them with one double crochet into each and you're going to go on top of the first chain three and make a slip stitch and then you're going to chain three turn your work make sure you always turn your work and we are going to do double crochets starting with the second stitch all the way across until you get to the design. We're almost getting to the design. I'm placing my last double crochet right before the design. And we're going to chain three, single crochet into the first chain eight space, chain eight, single crochet into the next chain eight space, chain eight, single crochet into the next chain eight space, and now you're going to chain three and double crochet into that very first stitch after the design. This is what you should be having. 
and you're going to double crochet until um, the second design so we have reached our second design and you're going to do the same exact thing as you did here chain three single crochet into the first chain eight chain eight single crochet into the next chain eight space chain eight single crochet into the next chain eight space chain three and you're going to double crochet into the very first double crochet after the design and double crochet all the way to the end of your round so we are at the end of our round and you're going to do the same exact thing as we've been doing before you go on top of the first chain three of the round and make a slip stitch and then you chain three and turn your work and this row this round that we are on right now is going to be the same exact as round three and then the next round after this one that we are going to be doing will be the same as round four so we are going to keep alternating between round three and round four until you have a total of 18 rounds and then we shall see what to do from there so now we are back and um, we have a total of 18 rounds i haven't yet closed off this so i'm going to go into the very last stitch and make a slip stitch there so we have a total of 18 rounds so um if you're a bigger size i would recommend about 20 rows and if you're a smaller size you can go down by two rows maybe around 16 rows now uh, remember we end our rounds at the back side that's where the seam line is that's where it is that's my seam line and when you come to the front part you don't see anything going on in the middle section so you're going to identify your middle stitch and I've already counted mine. Remember, I had a total of 62 stitches all the way across. So my uh, stitch marker is in the middle here. It's not in any stitch because I have an even number of stitches. So I just counted 31 stitches to this side, 31 stitches to this side, and just placed a stitch marker there. So you're going to go back to your back side where your yarn is still attached. And you're going to make a chain of 19 at least that's what I did so one two three four five six so I have my 19 chains and this measures um, it measures about three inches when not stretched but when stretched it goes up to about four inches so this is the part that's going to go in between our legs so at this point you're going to just go to the front side and attach into that space where the stitch marker was so you're going to remove the stitch marker and attach with a slip stitch and that's how your shirt should look like and you can try it on at this point if it's not fitting very well then you can elongate this middle chain if if it's too big then you can make it shorter so this the circumference of one of the legs should be the circumference of your um, thigh so that it goes around comfortably well make sure you take note of that and now we are going to be uh, working on the downer part of the shorts let me put this away so you're going to chain three and 
we are going to first work on one leg and then we shall work on the second one so you're going to chain three go into the next stitch with one double crochet and continue to double crochet until you get to the design So when you get to the design here, you're going to go ahead and just go with the flow of the pattern. So since this started with a chain three, that means we start with a chain eight and then single crochet into the chain eight space, chain eight, single crochet into the next chain eight space, chain eight, and then go on to the other side of the double crochets so when it comes to the design we are just doing the same exact thing that we were doing before and you're going to go all the way around until you get to this point and i'll show you what to do here okay so when you get to the chain you are going to go into each and every chain with one double crochet so find a way of placing one double crochet into each and every chain so you can see if i stop on the last the last stitch here before the chain and then i jump into the very first chain here this is going to create a hole in our work which i don't like so i'll go in the space first the space with the chain and then I go into the double crochet, the, the chain with a double crochet that will close up a bit and then continue to place one double crochet into each and every chain. I'm working on the back side of the chain because that's what that's the direction that the chain is giving me. I'm sure when I'm working on the second leg, it will give me the front side of the chain. Go into each and every chain. Make sure you've placed your 19 double crochets. Because we had a total of 19 chains or whatever number of chains that you did in the middle. Right, so we are coming to the end here we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 that means the 19th chain is here and I have to go into it and then I'm going to go on top of the very first chain 3 with one slip stitch so that closes up the first row of the one of the legs so we are going to chain three turn our work make sure you always turn your work while working and you're going to go all the way around when you get to the design just go with the flow of the pattern So now we are working on this chain all the way back to the design and then we come back here slip stitch and I'm going to do some more rounds and I'll show you how my shirt will look like after that. Okay so I did a total of six rows six rounds for my leg hole and you can see it's one two three four five and six so you're going to want to make sure that you end on a row that has three eight eight three 
there so that we can do our final round that wraps up everything. I don't want this lacy bit to be on the edge. So I will be doing a final round around my work. So whatever number of rows that you decide to do before the last round, you're going to want to make sure you end on the one that has 3883 three chains. And then after that, you're going to also make sure that you're working your final round on the right side of your work. So I know um, my second last round was on the right side, but it doesn't matter. Just chain three, go into the next stitch with a double crochet and work on the right side of your work. So I'm going to double crochet until I get to this point and I show you how to wind up. So when you get to the design part, here we are, you're going to make three double crochets in the first chain three space. One, two, and three. And then in this chain eight space, you're going to place a total of four double crochets. And then in the next chain eight space, four double crochets. And then in the chain three space, you'll go in there with three double crochets. And then you will reconnect onto the body of the shirt that doesn't have the design and continue to double crochet all the way across. So let me show you how that looks like. I think I prefer it like this. I don't want these loops hanging around my shirt at the base. So I'm going to go all the way across and I'll meet you guys back at this point. So I have made it all the way around and I'm placing my slip stitch into the very top of the first chain three. I know the seam line for this leg was at the front, but I've tried my best to make it neat so that it doesn't show anywhere. So um, if you would like your shirt to stay like this, that's fine. But I really don't like double crochets at the edge of my work. So I'm going to go ahead and do some more edging for my shirt. Now I am going to chain four and that counts as a double crochet chain one. Skip one stitch, double crochet into the next. Chain one, skip one stitch, double crochet into the next. And we are going to do that all the way around. We are going to be creating a mesh pattern at the base of our shirt. This is just to make it a little bit prettier and to give it more detail since it's more like a plain design, especially at the front and the back. The sides are fine, but the shirt is almost basic at the front and the back. So we're just trying to give it some more detail at the base and then we see how that turns out. So when you get to the design part, we still have plain double crochets, so you're going to just go with the flow of the pattern. Skip one, double crochet into the next. Chain one, skip one stitch, double crochet into the next. So nothing really changes here. You're going to just go across as usual. So I've made it all the way around with my mesh stitch and we are going to chain one and slip stitch into the chain three. One, two, three. Remember we started with a chain of four. So you go into the third chain and make your slip stitch. So uh, we're going to go into the very first chain one space with a single crochet. Chain three. And then double crochet three more times into that space one two and three and then single crochet into the next space and single crochet into the next then chain three double crochet into that same exact space single crochet into the next chain one space and single crochet into the next chain one space chain three, go into the same space, 
with three double crochets. Single crochet into the next once, and then single crochet into the next. So that's the repeat for the very final round that makes the scallops of our short. So I'm going to go all the way around doing this and then I'll meet you guys back at the end. So I'm coming to the end of my round and I've placed my very last scallop into this chain, single crochet and single crochet into the next. Now I'm going to go into the very first single crochet that I did with a slip stitch and then I'll chain one and cut my yarn. All right, so that marks the end of the very first leg and let me show you what we have. This is what it looks like. This is the base of the leg and I'm really pleased with this compared to just a plain row of double crochets at the base. This is the side of our shirt. This is what it looks like. Then, um, now you're going to go ahead and work your second leg the same exact way that you've done the first one so you're going to attach your yarn in any of the stitches go all the way around into each and every chain and work your double crochets back and forth and don't forget to always turn your work at the beginning of every round then um you'll wind up the same exact way that we've done the second leg so I always have people who are watching and they are challenged by how to start the second leg. So I'm going to be showing you. You're going to make a slip knot. And this time I want the seam line to be at the back because I noticed my very first one was at the front. But this one, I'll do the back side. So I'll attach my yarn in any of the stitches chain one and since this row is facing this side you can see this and we don't want to tamper with the pattern of the lines in our short after my after attaching my yarn in that stitch i will chain three and turn to the opposite side of the previous row so you're going to go into the next stitch with a double crochet and continue to double crochet until the design everything else remains the same So I'm going to double crochet until I get to the design and then I'll work my design here as usual and then I'll come all the way to this side and then I'll slip stitch in the very first stitch. So that's all that you have to do and let me go ahead and work my second leg and I'll be back to show you how to work on the waistband. All right, so we are back and both legs are now finished at this point and this is what you should be having. This is the part that's going to go in between your legs. And this is our first leg and this is the second leg finished. So now we are going to go to our waistband and you're going to turn your work to the wrong side. I know this is the wrong side because it has the seam line or it has this tail here. So you're going to grab your yarn and attach with a slip knot. This is your slip knot, so you're going to attach it somewhere next to this tail. So I'm going to just go in between these first two stitches with a slip stitch. And I'm going to chain three. Now after your chain of three, 
So I'm going to do a front post double crochet in the very first stitch and a back post double crochet in the next stitch. So the front post you prepare for a double crochet and go behind the stitch and push it upwards so it comes to the front of your work. So that's the front post and for the back post you prepare for a double crochet, come and push the stitch to the back and work your back post double crochet. So I'm going to keep alternating between these two stitches all the way around my work. So it's one front post, one back post. Keep alternating between that until you make it all the way back to this point here. So right now we are working the waistband. So I've made it all the way around and I've placed a back post double crochet in the very last stitch. Now I'm going to go in the space between the first two stitches with a slip stitch to wind up my row like that. And then you're going to chain three and you're going to place one front post double crochet into each front post. So the front posts are the ones that are popping on top of the shirt. Then the back posts are these ones at the back, the ones that are pushed to the back. So one front post in each front post and one back post in each back post. This is going to help us keep the ridges in one straight line to create the ribbed effect for um, the waistband. So you're going to go all the way around. Then when you come to the end, slip stitch in the middle of the first two stitches, just like we did for our previous row. And then you'll do one more round and I'll meet you guys back when you have three rounds of the waistband. So we are going to do this. This is our second one. And then we shall do one more and then I'll show you how to wind up the shot. Okay, so we are done with our three rounds for the waistband. So after the, your slip stitch, you will chain one and pull through your yarn. Make sure it's tight enough. Now, this is how our shirt looks like at the front. And then the back side has this chain here. So we are going to make a very simple chain of about 200 chains. So I want to use two strands so that it's a bit thick. I'll be using two strands. So start with a slip knot and make your chain of 200. So I have made 200 chains here and I'm going to chain one more, cut my yarn and we're going to be putting the, the string through the waistband. So you're going to just eyeball and find the exact middle of the front side. I'm going to go in and out of every two stitches. So I'm placing my uh, drawstring in the second row from the top. So there's this row and then there's the second row from the top. That's where I'm placing the drawstring. This is going to help us get a better fitting for our shorts 
around the waist since we considered our hip measurement when we were starting to make the shirt. So I'm going to go all the way around until I make it to the middle section. All right, so we are done with the, the drawstring, putting it through the waist. If you wanted your drawstring to be a little bit longer, then maybe you would have done around 300 chains, but this is fine for me. So um, this drawstring is to help close up the waist area like that, so that we get a better fitting for our shirt. So at this point we are done and the only thing left is to weave in your ends. You can get rid of all these strands that are lying around. And also use your darning needle to weave in the ones that are left. And when it comes to this, uh, to the drawstring, you can go ahead and put beads or tassels, or you can even leave them plain or just tie a plain knot so that it doesn't come through the shirt when the client is wearing it. But I'm not going to do that. I'll go ahead and find the most suitable way to finish up my shirt later on. But yeah, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys liked it. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos. Bye.